All right, so now that we're out of the hangar here, we are going to come around here. You know, honestly, I see this little cord in here. And I'm going to mention this because we haven't figured out how to open this door yet here. I don't know if you got to, like, throw a grenade in here as well. I don't even think you can, can you? Boop. But one thing I did notice last time I came down here. Ooh, I don't know if I can even do this. Can I go up that way? How do I get up that way? Well, we got to figure out how to open that up. See a generator right there too, or a cord. Do something with this once you push the buttons down below. I don't know. Let's let's figure it out. Next next run, we're gonna play around here and then kind of figure this guy out here. Um. Hey, that reminds me of Division One. Just going back up the rope. As you can see, there's there's two little buttons here. There's a little mousy button and pop a bear button. Um, we're not not sure exactly what to do here, but oh, one thing I did see was you see that big circle up there? That's got to be up there for a reason. Like there's nothing there's nothing else circled like that around the entire hangar. If if that's not you know something up there. The thing about that is I threw a grenade up there last time and it made this weird like clicking buzzing sound. So I'm wondering if you need like one person up top, throw a grenade up here, push the button, push those two buttons and you open some other random door. Most likely I feel like you either open this door or that door. I, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to run through here. And then from my understanding, you... There's a key box back here, but you're not going to get this one quite yet. And you got to throw it at the back right, I believe, is what I heard. Back... Come on. Back right, inside there. So you're going to throw a grenade in the back right. And I... It's gonna, oh, you heard that blow up, and it just opens the door, and then you grab your, your key fragment there. Uh, but you're not going to do that one quite yet. You're going to do something over here. And honestly, I wasn't paying attention when these guys were trying to go for keys. Um, I think you use some kind of booster hive, and then you make a run for this um, elevator here, and the, the other key fragments in here. Honestly, I'm sorry, but I, I can't remember how to open that guy. So we're going to come on through. And then... Where are we at here? Oh, um... Okay. We're at little... The Doggo Land. Now... Uh, everything's open. This this is going to make it nice to be able to, to explain everything. Okay. So when you're in this room here, ignore the computers. I really would just ignore the computers. You can try and do something with them, but I don't think it really helps. I think there's better ways around it. So Lucy is going to spawn right there. Buddy Boy is going to spawn right there. And they're going to come out to the center of the room. You're going to keep three people, possibly two. We did it two and six the first time. Um, you're going to keep... Two of your highest DPS guys over here that are probably your two best players. Um, just because the survivability of, of Lucy is is a little bit rougher than Buddy. Uh, but when you push the button that's over there, it's going to spawn Lucy and Buddy. And what you're going to want to do is get these people on this side to aggro Lucy. And then... Homeboy over here is going to spawn, or is going to aggro Buddy. He's going to spawn right about this area here. And you're going to bring Buddy back this way. And here's a, here's a little secret that I saw the other day. We didn't actually need to do it like this, but if you get Buddy in this area here, for some reason he just can't move very well, and he will actually... Um, he'll actually, like, trip out, and he'll kind of stay in this area and not really move. He'll still throw his secret mines and still heal up, but he just doesn't really move very well if you can get him, like, right here on this medical supply banner. Um, but what I like to do, and this is my position here, is I chill out right here so I can so I can kill Lucy if they need it, 
because we're all running only two people over there, and then I can shoot Buddy if we need it. But as you can see, there's a lot of different walls around here that you can use as cover from Lucy. She'll do the little minigun thing, which which everybody's died from before. Don't don't feel bad if you die. Um, but she'll but there are a lot of spaces to chill out here without getting hit by Lucy, and eventually you should get to the point where you're not ever getting hit by Lucy. Uh, because there's just so much cover in here that you, you don't need to worry about um, getting hit by Lucy. So like I said, there is a minigun function on Lucy, and if you can keep her somewhere in this area, you know, you can really, you can really just kind of walk around these, um, these areas here. You know, a lot of people stay right here. But you do have to be kind of careful. I've been killed right here before when Lucy's like right here. So, I, I mean, I, honestly, I don't like this spot as much. Um, but there are better spots over in this area if you can try and keep Lucy somewhere right around here. What this also does is you can see if, if she's right about here, her minigun doesn't spray all through um, everywhere. You know, they got this wall right there to, to kind of block her in. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and... So, up where that that uh, computer screen is at the top of the screen there there'll be the health bars and really you you want to make sure that you're almost continuously DPSing buddy um, while also um, you know keeping an eye on Lucy you know when when they go down to do the little minigun thing about a second after that's done buddy starts healing and you can kind of knock him out of the heal process uh, as long as you keep enough DPS on him but you know, if you keep five people over there, one person either right in this area here, which is a little far away, um, or one person right here, you can just kind of stand here and just continually DPS that stupid little doggy. Um, but just make sure you're you're keeping an eye on their health bars. Uh, this one is pretty self-explanatory. Like I said, I wouldn't even worry about the computers because once they do overcharge, Buddy and Lucy will both start to run back to the center. But if you do enough damage to Buddy, you can stagger him out of the um, out of the overcharge mode. Uh, just, you know, you have to keep an eye on that. Um, you know, the the other thing I want to mention is don't clump up up here because uh, Buddy's secret mines do kind of stack damage so you'll get knocked by two of them and people start going down and then um, it gets kind of a cluster to keep them in line there uh, but really it, it's a straightforward fight as long as you stay in cover stay behind a wall um, and do enough damage to uh, keep their health in line um, I actually switch over to true patriot on this one with uh, an MG5, I'm kind of weird. I like the MG5. It, it does enough damage. And I've got a pretty nice uh, M60. I don't, I don't even have Demolitionist on right now either, but, um, you know, 24.6 at 500 RPM. Actually, it's 550 RPM. Wait, wait. 28? 28.3 at 550 RPM versus... 17.7 .7 at 880 and I can just get it I can get quite a few more bullets off on uh, on the NPCs there you know the the continual DPS will help there all right that my friends is buddy and Lucy that's not the greatest explanation but it is pretty straightforward as long as you can stay out of the the way of the Lucy minigun and you can stay Kind of separated to the point where you're not clumping up and and getting hit by multiple seeker mines because buddy buddy doesn't even hurt that much as long as you have a little bit of protection from elites or um a pretty good survivability